All right, hi everybody. This is uh, the Husky engineer. Um, I'm here today to give a demonstration of COMSOL multi physics for ME331 at the University of Washington. Um, so today I'll be simulating the second uh, heat transfer lab, which is um, an analysis of pin fins. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll be doing the square copper tube. Um, so let's get started. Uh, when you first open console, this is what you're going to see. Um, so first thing you should do is save. So I'm just going to save it to the desktop. I'm going to call this console lab 2. All right, so you want to select your uh, space dimension. So this is basically just how you want uh, your model to be shown. So I'm just going to select 3D and click next. Uh, now we want to do a heat transfer analysis. So you want to use the heat transfer module. Uh, and we want to do this in a solid. Click next. Takes a little second. All right, and now we want our study to be stationary, um, which means uh, it'll be a time independent uh, result. So now you want to click finish. All right, so our lab was done uh, with inches as the unit. So you want to select the uh, uh, unit to be inches. Uh, there's no angular unit, so this doesn't matter. Um, so now you want to start defining the parameters uh, of the model. Um, so you want to right click on geometry. Uh, and you want to choose the type of geometry you want. So now in this lab, uh, we had two different fins, uh, the cylindrical one and the square tube. Uh, so like I said before, I'm going to do the square copper tube for this demonstration, so I'm going to click on block. And then I want to define the dimensions. So ours was uh, 0 0.501 inches uh, by 0 0.499 inches uh, with a length of 11.25. Uh, and I'm just going to position this at the origin. Um, so I'm just going to leave it all zeros. And you want to click on build all. All right, so as you can see, it built a little model of it over here on the right. Uh, so now you want to define the material of that model. So you want to right click on material, click materials. Uh, now this is copper, so you want to get your material properties um, from either the book or the internet. Um, so uh, the numbers I got uh, were. 89.33 kilograms per meter cubed for the density. Uh, for thermal conductivity, I got 405.5. And for heat capacity, I got 386.75. Now, um, I interpolated these values from the appendix of the heat transfer book. Um, for 350 Kelvin, um, just because it was an estimated temperature for the rod, uh, for the overall rod. Um, you might have to use different numbers depending on what temperatures you were testing at. Um, all right, so now once you have your material defined, um, first off, make sure the entire block is selected when you click on uh, number one. It should be, uh, but I just want to double check. Um, okay, so now, uh, for the actual heat transfer analysis, um, you want to make sure the initial value, value is room temperature. Um, so now the lab uh, should have given you a ambient temperature reading from the DAC. And ours was uh, 25 and a half uh, C. Uh, so let me just convert that to Kelvin real fast. That's 298.449. So we're we'll just call that 298.5. All right, so now you want to right click on the heat transfer in solids and you want to choose uh, your boundary heat source. All right, so now what this will do is it'll, you're basically telling the model um, that. 
at this boundary, this was the, the source of the heat. Um, so uh, in our lab, uh, what happened was we had a heater at the base uh, of our fin uh, that was heating it up. Um, so now uh, you can do either the general source, uh, in which case you use the power divide, divided by the area. Uh, I'm just going to do total boundary power. Um, so for this lab, we had a total boundary power for copper of uh, 6.732, as measured by the deck. Uh, watts. So I'll enter that in. And then um, you want to define the um, the boundary that this applies to. So uh, as you can see, I highlighted uh, this region right here in red. Um, so once it's highlighted, you want to click the Add to Selection button, uh, and it should turn blue. Uh, so as you, you can see, it was surface number four. Um, so now you want to de um, define the rest of the boundaries. So you want to right-click, and you want to click on Heat Flux. Uh, so this is uh, basically everything else. So easy way to do it, click all boundaries. Uh, remember the the other one was number four, so you want to remove that. This is everything else. So you want to make sure the, um, the boundary heat source um, surface is not selected here. Uh, so here um, you want to uh, make sure that uh, they're all selected. Um, and then you want to click on, where is that? Oh, sorry, here it is. Um, okay, so you want to click on inward heat flux. And you want to uh, make sure your external temperature is room temperature or ambient temperature. And you want to make sure your H is defined. Okay, so for H, uh, this value is a little tricky. Um, so you have to uh, do the calculations first to get an estimated H um, from your values. Um, so uh, this can be done in multiple ways. Um, so according to the lab uh, write-up, bring it up here real fast. So um, depending on uh, what quarter you're taking this, you might have a different lab write-up. But basically here, uh, in the calculations, you need to estimate an H value using overall heat balance in the fin and average uh, fin surface temperature. Uh, so then I'm just going to use a value of 15. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, all right, so once that's defined, you want to click on Mesh. And you want to change element size to Fine. And you want to click Build All. So basically, this just meshes your model and preps it for analysis. So now you want to right-click on Study, and you want to click Compute. And give it a second to compute. All right. Um, so now, as you can see, this uh, spits out a temperature map of your fin. Uh, I'm just going to change the units to uh, centigrade, so we can compare with the lab results. Okay, right click and recompute. All right. So let's take a look. All right, so as you can see, uh, this is the uh, the surface that we defined um, as the boundary heat source. Um, so it looks like it's the model is defined this at around 65 degrees C. Uh, now, based on our um, our uh, uh, data, uh, you can see that the base. Uh, that the DAC recorder was 70 degrees C, uh, which is pretty close. A 5 degrees C difference. Um, and the tip, or sorry, at, um, uh, at, one, at the at one end, it was 58.39 uh, C. 
Um, so I believe that was around 10 inches from the base. Uh, now we define this rod to be 11 inches. Um, and at the tip, it's uh, saying it's around 51 degrees. So um, there is a, a noticeable difference, um, but there could be several factors. Uh, most notably, the H value that you use. Um, so nice thing about console is you can play around with the numbers, um, and it'll update very quickly. Uh, so let me see if I can go back. Do a heat flux. So uh, again, your H will depend on what type of analysis you did. Um, you can use the equations from table 3.4, I believe, in the book. Um, so there are four different conditions, the adiabatic, uh, the convective, the infinite fin, and uh, what was the last one? Oh, and uh, uh, I think it was the insulated one. Um, but yeah, so depending on which equations you used, uh, you could have different H values. Um, so for example, if I doubled it to 30, and I reran the study, you'll notice that the temperatures drop dramatically because the uh, convection between the rod and the air uh, increased significantly, or it doubled, uh, based on the, uh, the heat transfer coefficient. So I'm just going to put that back to 15. Um, so now, there was another discrepancy in, in the lab data. Um, so the DAC recorded uh, a base power of 6.732 watts. But we had a ammeter and a voltmeter hooked up to the system as well, and that actually recorded uh, around 9.74 watts. So I'm just going to go back and change that. And recompute. All right, um, so now we get uh, much higher numbers because uh, we're basically saying that the uh, base is much hotter. Um, so as you can see, for copper, um, so at the tip we had a, or close to the tip at 10 inches, we had 58 degrees. Here it's at 63 degrees. Um, so again, this model isn't perfect. Uh, there are a lot of other factors you need to think about. Um, for example, uh, in the discussion, you'll have to talk about uh, what sources of error uh, were in this lab. So one possible source of error is the uh, re re uh, surface resistance um, uh, between the base and uh, the base of the heater and the rest of the fin. Uh, other obvious uh, differences would be the uh, radiation that comes off of this. Uh, as well as, um, uh, what's the other one? Oh, as long as uh, there uh, could be significant heat loss between uh, the base and the insulated, uh, the other end of the heater, basically. Um, so not all of the energy from the heater goes into the rod. Um, so you can play around with uh, different values to see if you can get a more accurate model. Um, now, heat, uh, console has... Uh, several other modules you can use. Uh, for example, um, they have thermal radiation that you can simulate. Uh, now, I did this model for the free convection, so there was no forced air in here. Um, but you can always add that in. Uh, I'm not going to do it because it's super complicated, um, at least for me. So you can look into it if you want. There are uh, 2D convection um, examples that come with console. Um, so you can take a look at that if you want. Uh, you can also do this with the other uh, types uh, of fins. So remember, when our geometry, we define a square rod. Um, if you uh, right-click on geometry and you click on uh, cylinder, you can define a second geometry. Um, Oh, sorry, sorry, you want a uh, geometry two. So, uh, well, you're probably better off uh, making a new model for that. But um, like I said, uh, console is great for 
uh, changing your values real fast and then re-simulating. Um, so I would highly recommend you play around with this. And yeah, uh, hope you guys learned something during this tutorial. Uh, and I'm signing off.